This is the Effing One Podcast, Australia's only Formula One podcast with Adam and Luke. G'day and welcome to the Effing One Podcast, Australia's only dedicated Formula One podcast that I know of. That's our motto. We're here to make Formula One great again. Um, We're going to do it with me, by myself. Um, we don't know where Adam is, he's MIA, maybe he's forgotten there's a Turkish Grand Prix this weekend, but I haven't, and I am strapped in and ready to give you a bit of intimate feelings, just you and me listening on the podcast. Um, we have the Imola Grand Prix to wrap up, and then we have a quick preview of the Turkish Grand Prix that's happening um, as I talk. Um, it's slippery, it's wet. Very slippery on Friday, and and now it's uh, a little bit drizzly, a little bit rainy, and some of the cars are struggling to get some grip and some heat into their tyres as they go around the Istanbul circuit. But let's look back at the Imola race. Um, A decent race, not a lot of overtaking. It was always difficult to overtake at Imola, as we saw with the Schumacher-Alonso battles in 0506. Um, but they're, they're back to Imola. The drivers really appreciated and enjoyed the qualifying. Um, Daniel Ricciardo said it was his best lap of the year by far. Um, and a lot of corners that you can really make a difference if you've got your, your big balls on that day. And um, they certainly had them out in full display to show everyone just how big their cojones are. Um, Bit of a race recap of Imola, unfortunately um, for Pierre Gasly, um, going to the grid they found that his uh, car had a bit of an issue. They looked at it on the grid, um, they couldn't fix it early on in the race. He didn't have the best start, Daniel got past him um, and it was Bottas, Verstappen, Hamilton leading off, Daniel whipped into fourth. Um, a good little tete-a-tete um, for the positions early on, especially further down the field. But um, unfortunately, Pierre Gasly, with his great qualifying the day before for fourth, um, he had a bit of a, a leak found, and uh, his race was over pretty quickly. They had to retire him, or else it would have been a catastrophic engine fuck up Um So Hamilton was stuck behind Verstappen, said it was very difficult to pass. He couldn't get close to even have an opportunity. Max Pitts, and that kind of forced the hand for Valtteri Bottas to either stay out um, and possibly be undercut by Max, or um, pit very quickly and uh, get out ahead of him. And that's what they chose to do. Lewis decided to stay out, extended his stint, with his strategy and his team, um, Team Lewis Hamilton Mercedes, I think we're going to call it now. It was no fault of of Valtteri. Um, He, it's it's a matter of you need to react. You either react or you need to show that you've got pace to stay out ahead. And unfortunately, Valtteri didn't have the pace. He had a bit of Sebastian Vettel's uh, front wing end plate stuck. Um, I believe it was in the floor, um, a, a fair chunk that was taking about eight tenths of a lap from performance from Valtteri's car. So it was um, it wasn't ideal for Paul Valtteri. He's not getting the rub of the green, but you kind of make your own luck. It is weird. You you lead in the race. He said he saw the debris, but he couldn't really avoid it. And um, yeah, drove into it. It got stuck on his car, ruined. Um, the flow of the car, the airflow, which, you know, scuppers downforce. And um, unfortunately for him, Hamilton stayed out, ran long, and had a decent gap um, before the virtual safety car came out. If if Lewis had pitted before the virtual safety car, I believe with his the gap that he had, he probably, unless they was a four-second pit stop, I think Lewis would have got out ahead anyway. But the virtual safety car, made it very very easy for him to get that pit stop in and out and done and won he goes on to win the race Um, there was a safety car that came out thanks to Max Verstappen and a blown rear Um, that blown rear then pushes um, Daniel Ricciardo um, into a podium position after Sergio Perez and Racing Point really dropped the ball 
um, with a potential podium right there for the taking if they just stayed out on the hard tyres. They had fresher, harder tyres, fresher, hard tyres than Daniel had. Daniel pitted a little bit earlier, um, but Sergio did a great job um, to push his tyres in the first stint a little bit longer, and he got the, the position on Daniel and was clearing away from Daniel after the pit stop. So Racing Point had a bit of pace over the Renault, um, but unfortunately that safety car for Max, Racing Point decided to pit him on for softs. A few other teams did that as well. Um, Daniel Kvyat, I believe, did. Um, but he kind of made it stick after the safety car went away. Um, there was something that happened within safety car. I'm not sure how many people actually realize what happened. Um, when all the cars are allowed to unlap, um, they basically they go at pretty much 95 to 100% to get to the back of the field. Um, they're told they're allowed to pass the safety car and unlap themselves. Um, it was unfortunate for Lance Stroll. Oh, it wasn't really unfortunate for anyone, but it was very sketchy, a bit uh, very dangerous. Um, if you check out, there's some Reddit threads going around. I'll see if I can repost the video of Lance's unlapping himself. And he came, um, you look at the, the Kimi on board and a few of the other drivers on board as they came to the double-waved yellow section. Um, all the drivers were communicated to them and said, um, there's track marshals still on the track where George Russell binned the Williams from 10th place, a point-paying position. He sat there disconsolate after um, binning a possible opportunity at, uh, at his first world championship point. Um, he'll get it one day, no doubt. We all know that. Um, but a tough day for him. But yeah, the, the where they were cleaning all of his mess up, um, the lap cars were allowed to be unleashed and unlap themselves. And you, Kimi Raikkonen was sensible, went through there really slow. Um, a few other drivers were a little bit quicker. Um, and Sebastian Vettel's like, that. well, that's a really bit dangerous. You know, we need to have better communication there. But the team, all, all the teams that, that communicated to their drivers, all the drivers slowed down in that area. Lance Stroll wasn't told that there was track workers on there, and he fanged it around that corner very, very quickly and to the point where he was within a meter of, of track workers, and he was going... Um, within a, a second of his best sector time of the Grand Prix. So it's, you know, he was pushing, um, and that could have been really bad. Um, poor communication by Force India. I hope that there's something happens from this in terms of better communication from the teams, from race control, um, because the track marshals need to be safe, and in that situation, it really wasn't. Um, but yeah, after that safety car, Daniel Ricciardo sat in third. He was on the hard tyres. He had a, about a lap and a half to really get those tyres back up to operating temperature where he could race. Daniel Kvyat made an amazing restart, got past Sergio Perez, made what I would regard as the overtake of the race around the outside of Leclerc, um, and then started to get close to Daniel. But unfortunately, Daniel, or unfortunately for Danny Kvyat, um, Ricardo's tyres got up to temperature and Daniel could maintain a gap where the um, the DRS wasn't really affecting the positions between uh, third and fourth there. But Daniel Kvyat gets fourth. Um, Lewis Hamilton stays stayed out in front um, of Valtteri Bottas. So one, two for Mercedes. Daniel Ricardo gets another podium. And probably the moment of the weekend, and probably the moment of the year in my eyes, of Lewis Hamilton doing a shoey on the podium. Now, that, he's the douche canoe. He's been the douche canoe for quite some time since we started this podcast. It was a, a nickname we threw out there. And that was chosen by you, the listeners. We had a poll, what should we name him, ham sandwich, um, or douche canoe. And 0% voted for Ham Sandwich, and everyone else voted for Douche Canoe. It's probably one of our most popular polls we had back then. And uh, so the Douche Canoe he is. But after that, drinking of the shoe. I, I don't know. I He's stepped up. He, I think he's gone out of douchebaggery. 
he's that's that's a big thing to drink from someone else's sweaty shoe from someone who's a little bit of a germaphobe that's uh i like seeing that i think everyone likes seeing that i think everyone was a bit surprised by it as well but he's turned up to the turkish grand prix lewis hamilton and he is still fighting fit and he didn't get any um tinea or foot and mouth or whatever you would get from daniel ricardo's race boot um so yeah great end for daniel ricardo gets third um, a solid finish and the rest of the points were hamilton bottas ricardo kvyat leclerc perez didn't really make much of an impact on the restart unfortunately for him and racing point misses out on that Podium signs Norris, Raikkonen, and Giovinazzi. The two Alfa Romeos getting in the points. Great drive from those two. Um, same with the McLarens. Daniel Ricciardo is sits fourth in the World Championship. Renault sitting third. Nice little battle between Renault, Racing Point, and McLaren, all within a couple of points of each other for the fight of four, uh, third in the Constructors' Championship. Um, I think Crofty said on practice, on, on the, the Turkish practice one or practice two, he's like, I wonder if Daniel Ricciardo will um, think about, you know, possibly driving a little bit slower to so Renault doesn't get third in the championship so that it goes to possibly McLaren and McLaren gets more um, prize money um, from their Constructors' Championship. And uh, that's the Everest of Fuckwittery brought to you by David Croft. That the possibility or idea that a driver would sandbag for his future team. Um, I think if Daniel did that, he would be out of the Renault drive immediately. Um, and they would tear up his contract on the spot for doing anything like that. Also, there is probably performance bonuses if you're getting more podiums. There would be a dollar figure attached to that. Also, if Renault get X in the championship, there'd be dollar figures for that. Too. So to say that there would be no reason for him to really help out a team that will be his competitor next year, I think that's complete utter bullshit. And once again, David Croft talks completely out of his ass. So let's talk about the Imola Awards. Um, so we've got five awards and one medal um, that we give out in this effing one podcast. We have the Green Award. The Green Award is for lowering a carbon footprint. So someone who retires early, you don't go home empty-handed. You're saving the environment. You're thinking about your carbon footprint. You're lowering emissions. You're forward-thinking. It's a great thing to do. And the Green Award for the Imola Grand Prix goes to Pierre Gasly for his early retirement. Well done, Pierre. Congratulations. You take home the Imola Grand Prix Green Award. The next award is the Pastor Maldonado Award, and we all know what that award is. That's for dangerous driving. That's for being a little bit crazy on the racetrack. And uh, we're giving that to George Russell. He didn't take anyone out, um, but he did manage to take himself out, driving the straight line down a hill, turn left into a wall, and that caused a further delay in the safety car uh, ending. So well done to George Russell for... Ruining possibly your own race, but said you don't leave empty-handed on this podcast. You, my friend, get the Pastor Maldonado Award for Dangerous Driving at the Imola Grand Prix. Congratulations, Pastor. I'm um, sorry, George. Well, maybe we could call George Pastor. He's, he's won the award, so this week, he's the Pastor. Pastor Russell. Um, the Yuji Ide Award. Um, Yuji Ide Award is a waste of time award for those of you don't know Yuji Ide, he was the only driver to lose his super license. Um, he didn't lose it behind the couch or in his car somewhere. They revoked it because he was a shit driver. So the shittest driver of the Grand Prix of Imola goes to the man who crashed into the wall himself, George Russell. You win two effing one podcast awards. Um, he won't get a trifecta this weekend. There's some other moves and moments that have made it far more exhilarating but uh congratulations george um pastor russell um for a a crash and wasting your time and your team costing them a possible world championship point 
Um, the next award is the Lick It and Send It Award. It's for the best overtaking maneuver when you lick that stamp and send it. We're giving that to Daniel Kvyat on Charles Leclerc. After the safety car restart, made a fantastic move around the outside of Charles Leclerc. Yes, he had brand new soft tires, but my God, he made that move stick. And I got a little bit excited. I actually applauded the television, which isn't something I do very frequently. But uh, that, was a, that was a great move. There was a few other good moves that kind of made it stick. Um, like Max Verstappen's move on Valtteri Bottas after Valtteri made a little bit of a mistake. Um, but yeah, it's um, the Lickens and Award goes it to... The Russian missile, Daniel Kvyat. Uh, the next and final award is the Effing One Podcast Award, named after our podcast. And it's for making Formula One great again. And that's going to go to Lewis, who did the shoey on the podium. Now, that is the moment that made F1 great again. He's a, he's a human man who drinks from another human shoe who's just raced in a Grand Prix. Well done, Lewis. You get the FM1 Podcast Award for making Formula 1 great again and winning another Grand Prix you can attach to a giant tally that you have already. And the final medal, um, this is the Speckled Jim medal. Most of you know Speckled Jim. For those of you uninitiated with our fine, not-so-feathered friend, uh, Speckled Jim was our mascot. He was our spirit animal. Um, he is a, a fighting rooster, a fighting cock. We call him Speckled Jim. He has 127 um, fights. He's won one of them. He lost 126. He had a wonky eye, a dicky knee, um, and I didn't know that birds got crotch rot. Um, unfortunate for young Speckled Jim. Um, he, we lost him um, last year to an unfortunate training incident um, our producer producer pete loved that cock and had him just uh, doing some some light sparring with a dippy bird one of those birds that dips down for water and keeps going back for more um, speckled jam was um, distracted um, quite often he gets distracted he's got a lot of concussions and he can't really focus for a very long time um, he has add had add doesn't have that anymore. He's dead. Um, sorry, spoiler alert. Speckled Jim's dead. He, uh, yeah, he has. Um, he had attention deficit disorder. Um, he was seeing a, a chicken psychologist for that. A lot of money went into that cock. He was a horrible fighter, but uh, one hell of an ambassador for this podcast. And we have a medal in his name, the Speckled Jim Medal, which gives you uh, like the best on ground three, two, one votes. Like they do in Australia, we have the the Brownlow Medal for the best on ground in an AFL game. So the best on ground for the Imola Grand Prix, three votes is going to Daniel Kvyat for his fantastic drive up into fourth position. Nearly got a podium. Uh, two points goes to Daniel, the personality of Ricardo, for another podium, a snatched podium out of the the hands of the one-point winner is Sergio Perez um, for the Speckled Jim medal for the best in race, in our opinion. Um, and congratulations. That goes to their tally of the Speckled Jim medal. Um, on top is the personality with 13, Douche Canoe, Lewis Hamilton on 9, Gas Man 8, the Tijuana Tussler, Sergio Perez on 8, Chuck Norris Lando, uh, he is on six. The Mini Fons, Carlos Sainz, five. Talented Nico Hulkenberg on four. The Chosen One, Charles Leclerc, is on four. Daddy's Boy, Lance Stroll, three. Mad Max, three. Uh, the other Finn, which is Valtteri Boatas, he's got three. The TIE Fighter, Alexander Albin, two. Finger Boy, Sebastian Vettel, two. Kevin Mags, Magnussen, he's on one. And the French Stick, Esteban Ocon, he's on one. Um, now we're going to go into the turd championship. Now the probably the tightest championship is the turd championship. I think Lewis Hamilton will win um, his seventh World Drivers Championship this weekend. 
Um, and that leaves, there's only one championship really to wrap up since the Constructors is done. The drivers will be run up this weekend unless something unfortunate happens to Lewis. I can't see him losing this world championship at all. So the third championship. So it's like the reverse championship. So if you go, if you're 20th, you, that's a win in the third championship. So you get negative points. You get negative 25 points, negative 18 points to finishing 19th. Um, so it's a great, ah, tight, interesting championship where before, we no one does this. No one does the third championship, but we do it. And the leader of the third championship, which is on Sky right now, is Kevin Mags Magnuson, 134 points. Right now, he's the shittest driver in Formula 1. He's had a bit of bad luck this year, Mags, but he also hasn't been driving very well. Um, the next driver is... George Pasta um, Russell, he's on 125 negative points. His teammate, Nicholas Latifi, on 113. And then there's a bit of a gap back to uh, Antonio Giovinazzi, the pizza delivery boy. Um, he's on 94. Romain Grosjean, uh, far less shitter this year than his teammate. He's on negative 92 and out the door for Formula 1, as will be Mags next year. Um, I'm not saying that the third championship kind of decides all of this, but those two are in the top four of the third championship and out of a drive. Just just putting it out there. We're quite a um, persuasive podcast. Um, then we have Pierre Gasly, negative 84. Max Verstappen, negative 67. Charles Leclerc, negative 65. Esteban Ocon, 64. Sebastian Vettel, 59. Raikkonen, 50, Sainz, 48, Kvyat, 48, Stroll, 48, Alexander Alban, 34, Nika Hulkenberg and Daniel Ricciardo on negative 25 points, Valtteri Bottas, negative 19, and Lando Norris on negative 18. Still yet to enter into the third championship is the tier one of of Sergio Perez and Lewis, not quite so douche canoe after the Shuey Hamilton. Um, he is also not on the third championship board, so possible seven-time world champion still yet to feature on the third championship um, this year. So that's why he's, uh, he's going to win a world championship, because he's not on the third championship, the shittest driver um, of the year. But so far, Kevin Magnussen's leading that one quite easily. What do we got next? We have the... We'll wrap up the driver of the day. Kimi Raikkonen was voted by um, all the people of the interwebs on their phone. The fastest pit stop was Red Bull Racing with 1.93 second pit stop. The, tire, the car comes to a stop. Four tyres off. Four tyres on. He's going in 1.93 seconds. Congratulations, Red Bull. You've mastered that to an art. And the fastest up was a 1 minute 15.484 from Lewis Hamilton. Um, yeah, they're pretty dominant, those... Uh, those Mercedes, aren't they? Um, tipping results. I missed it last week. Um, my apologies, but I've got all the points all tallied up. Um, coming dead last, and the man who's not here to defend himself, I think that's why he's not here. He's, he's hiding in shame. Um, Adam is on 165. Pat on 169. <laughs> 69. Uh, Jim, 172. Cliff, 175. Pete, 178. And myself on 179. I think this is the only tipping championship that I've ever come close to being in the lead of. Um, so very happy about that. And the next, uh, we have some F1 news. What's going on around the world of F1? Is Alexander Albon going to keep his drive? Now, it's very hard to have a conversation by yourself talking about something when you've got no one to bounce off. But here we go. Alexander Albon, he hasn't been performing very well in the last few races since he got his podium. He's been closer in qualifying, but it's still yet to really put pressure on Max. And come race day, he tends to go backwards. Um, he spun on his own um, at Imola uh, on the safety car restart, which put him back and out of the points. Um, so I can't see... With the confirmation of Pierre Gasly at AlphaTauri, I can't see um, them keeping him. There's nothing like if anyone was going to be promoted from AlphaTauri into Red Bull Racing, it was going to be Gasly. Gasly's won a race. He's driven very well. He's outqualified Kvyat a hell of a lot. Um, but yeah, it's 
if he's the writing's on the wall i think red bull racing might look outside their driver academy and i think they need um a solid p driver on the hands whether it's a nico hulkenberg whether it's a sergio perez they need someone who's can consistently score points and also get in the way in terms of um being a sort of the if they're not ahead of max being the anchor to kind of change mercedes strategy where they can't just bully up and pair up and easily take or take on one driver and one team um red bull really need a, a teammate that can that can hold his own um so yeah i think albin will be out i think uh Sonoda, the japanese formula 2 driver will come into the alpha tauri outfit it'd be a shame to see alexander albin just out straight away um Hopefully they can put him back in the wings or someone else can pick him up at a later date. But does he deserve his Red Bull drive? I think not. He's a lovely guy. But there's this significant gap in qualifying that Alex can't seem to breach. And you need someone who can muscle that car and really drive the wheels off it. And I don't think... There's not many drivers... As I said last time, there's not many drivers who can who could possibly drive the Red Bull to the 10 tenths that Max does. Um, Hamilton, he's saying that he's not sure if he'll be around next year. Now, it, it, it all dropped. There was a few articles about it going around on the interweb. Uh, if you check out on Twitter as well, there was a heap of going around it. He hinted a suggestion that he may not be here um, in Formula 1 next year. Now, it's not guaranteed. Now, Toto Wolf hasn't signed... Uh, Lewis Hamilton hasn't signed. Valtteri Bottas has, which is clearly the anchor of the team. Um, he's the most important thing, so I'm glad they got that uh, sorted straight away. If Lewis doesn't sign, who do you think will sign? Who could possibly match Valtteri's um, determination and pace? Which Valtteri does have determination. It's just the skill, I think, that's, that he's lacking. Um, the talent ability just does, like, some people just don't have that X factor like Lewis does, uh, like Sebastian did, Charles Leclerc has, and there's a dog on the track. Um, watching a, a warm-up into qualifying, there is a dog on the track. So that's a, that's a new one. Turkey, known for their dogs on tracks. All right, next up, we have, uh, they've announced the race calendar. The race calendar has 23 races, 23 slots to race. The Vietnam Grand Prix has pulled out. Um, one of the organisers is under investigation for a bit of corruption, which, uh, that's unfortunate. Um, Vietnam was ready for their Grand Prix this year. With coronavirus, it has put a stop to that. They have an election next year and uh, they just didn't want the distraction of everything that's gone on the corruption had nothing to do with the f1 race i just want to say that clearly but there was um they've just they've decided they don't want to host the grand prix so the the slot is open where that that track was going when they were going to race there so there is a possibility of picking up another track and they'll be in asia from the chinese grand prix so I would hope for a Malaysia possible race. Malaysia is a great r racetrack in Sepang. Um, I would be pushing for that. It's in that area, in that part of the world, and it'd be great to have Malaysia um, back in for a year. Or they'll come back to Europe and possibly do another Portuguese Grand Prix or a Mugello since it's before the Spanish Grand Prix um, next year. But 23 races, that's a lot of, lot of racing which would be great for us to watch at home. And if you can get to a track, to be able to watch one live again, which we all want to see. Um, no, none of the replacement tracks. So the Turkey, Imola, Portimao, um, Mugello, none of them are on the calendar for next year, which is a bit of a shame. Um, Formula One is clearly going back to their roots of charging a lot of money and making it happen, um, which is unfortunate because there's been some really, really good racing. I'm not looking forward to Le Castellet um, at the French Grand Prix. Nothing against the French. Love the French. 
part the high speed the high tech test track they called it um, is boring as fuck and I wouldn't recommend watching it I unless you need a you know if you you're struggling to sleep I would suggest watching the French Grand Prix um, at Circuit Paul Ricard up next we have we're gonna wrap straight in to the race preview We're going to go straight into the race preview of the Turkish Grand Prix. They haven't been in Turkey since 2011. And that race winner was Sebastian Vettel ahead of Mark Webber and Fernando Alonso. Um, the Turkish Grand Prix is a 4.653 kilometer track. 58 laps will be raced. 309.396 kilometers for the race distance in Istanbul, Turkey. Um, the lap record is a 1 minute 24.770. That was in 2005 with uh, Juan Pablo Montoya. It's a high tyre stress, especially the quadruple apex turn 8. F1 cars should be mega, um, but they found that with the recent resurfacing, it's as slippery as a motherfucker. Um, it's the, some of the drivers are saying it's just like driving on ice. And now with rain, possibly um, for qualifying and the race tomorrow... Um, depends which forecast you go to you check online some saying it's rain some saying it's there's no chance of rain so once again the meteorologists have done their job and have no idea what they're talking about um, but the race times for this weekend's Turkish Grand Prix on the Eastern Daylight Savings Time is 9 10 9 10 p.m. Queensland 8 10 p.m. Um, Western Australia and Ulaanbaatar is 6.10 p.m. The dog is still on the track. It's making its way um, around. It's panting. The ears flapping. It's a gorgeous dog. He's going, he's running onto the ripple strips. Oh, I think he might get his lap deleted there. He ran a little bit wide. Um, New Zealand. A nice little time for you guys. It's not in the stupid middle hours of the morning. It's 11.10 p.m. for New Zealand. You get to watch the Turkish Grand Prix nice and early. The Isle of Man is at 10.10 a.m. The United States East Coast, 5.10 a.m. And the United States West Coast, 2.10 a.m. Oh, that sucks, guys. Oh, my. That sucks. And Addis Ababa um, is 1.10 p.m. Sunday afternoon. Um, now, tips for the upcoming Grand Prix. Make sure you get them in. Check the, the pinned tweet on our Twitter, um, F1 Podcast. Check us out on Twitter. Um, Give us a follow. Check out the links. Add your tips in. Don't forget to do it. If you forget to add your tips in, you will get the minimum score by whoever was the shittest tipper that week. Um, and uh, lastly, I'd say hi to mum. Hi, mum. Um, and she's provided me with a way too much food, thinking Adam would be here. We've got a lot of Turkish delight, which if it's Cadbury's Turkish delight, you can get fucked, mum. Um, but just the jelly Turkish delight, which is powdered with a little bit of sugar and it's quite delicious. Baklava, very sweet pastry, sickeningly sweet for some people. Um, we've got a manti, a kof kofta, everyone loves a bit of kofta. Donut kebab, one of Adam's favorites. Um, a borek, a kuzu tandir, um, and... The famous wet hamburger Islak burgers all washed down with some delicious crab juice. Um, enjoy the Turkish Grand Prix this weekend. Hopefully next podcast we'll have Adam back and all of our special guests that we normally have. Enjoy the weekend and don't shit yourself.